how Adam lost dominion. How Adam lost dominion. How Adam lost dominion. Our Father and our God, we honor you this morning and we thank you for giving us this wonderful Sunday that you may speak to us and refer your word to us in a special way. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and we all say amen. So, uh, this will be printed, you will get a copy on Sunday, but how Adam lost dominion. While I'm about to make what happen, you... I gave an introduction of Adam and the dominion he was given because he was the first man. The first man was created by God. And God gave him dominion to rule, to control. So once we see how this man lost dominion, then we will be helped to maintain our dominion. Number one, what was the process by which Adam fell from the dominion, authority, and the power God had given him? Point number one, what was the process? What was the process by which Adam fell from the dominion that God had given to him, authority, and the power that God had given to him. What was the process? How did he reach there? How did he reach there? What was the process? The process gani ilimfanya mpaka kafika hapo mahali ambapo anapoteza dominion. This is very important for the purpose of governing the earth because he was given dominion, he was given power so that he can govern the earth. Yeah, that whatever he commanded, God honored. Number two, we can identify four stages that led to Adam's fall. This will help us to understand how to maintain the dominion that God has given to us. Authority. How we can command without losing that authority. Ndarudia kwa sababu isi bitumbini ni samuimu. How Adam lost dominion. Number one, what was the process? We want to see the process. By which Adam fell from the dominion, authority and power God had given him for the purpose of governing the earth. The dominion, the power, the authority that was given to Adam, the, uh, the, the reason was for him to govern the earth, to govern the earth. Number two, we can identify, these are very, this is very important, we can identify four stages that led to Adam's fall. Kindly, I want you to follow these stages vizuri because they are going to help you understand how to maintain your dominion. How to exercise authority without losing it. Number three, this is the same tricks the enemy uses against the believers. This is the same tricks the enemy uses against the believers. Once we understand these tricks, we will not fall like Adam. His primary purpose to destroy the believers is through temptation. He uses temptations to destroy human beings or to destroy believers. It is important for all the believers to be aware of these tricks. We, uh, it's very important, it's biblical for all, our, all of us to be aware of the tricks that the enemy uses. He uses temptations. He uses tricks. Somebody was very authoritative. Somebody was exercising his power, his authority. But all of a 
of a sudden you are not able to exercise that authority, you no longer have power, you cannot control, you cannot command, you don't feel the anointing, that power flowing. So these stages will help us to understand of how we can easily lose our dominion. So they will guide us and enable us not to lose our dominion. God wants to maintain the dominion, God wants us to maintain the dominion that he gave to us. He wants us to maintain. He wants all of us to maintain the dominion, the power. When God gave Adam and Eve dominion, power, authority, he did not just give it for a short time. No, it was to remain in them. They were to use this authority and the power forever. And that is exactly what the church is supposed to be. So, and look at the stages. You know, it is it takes a process. Or oh, oh, your dominion, I talk to authority, I talk to. Una realize yata, una wakat you could believe God for things. You are very powerful. You could open your mouth, speak things, and they respond. But nowadays, you realize. Auna yo. Even when you authorize, you command, you realize I have power. It is empty. So, and look at those stages, the stages, the process. Because once we understand the stages, we understand the process, we will be careful not to lose this authority. You know, there are things that happen to us and we just take them for granted. No, there is a reason behind. The church is losing power. The church is losing authority. That is why we've resorted into things which are not biblical. But once we understand how to maintain this authority, this power, we will go far. Let's turn to Genesis chapter 2, verse number 9. Genesis chapter 2, verse number 9. Now, before we turn to Genesis 2, 9, uh, let me give you stage number 1. Adam was aware of his coexistence with the evil. And you. Adam was aware of his coexistence with evil. Coexistence with evil. The process, the stages. You know, authority doesn't just go. No. Once God has given you authority and you understand your authority and you exercise your authority, it will not go. It will not go. So there is a process. There are stages. Ambaso utahelewa ya kuwa kweli hapa. I'm losing my authority. So Adam was aware of his coexistence with evil. It never just happened. No, he knew the enemy was there. He knew that the enemy existed. And that is the reason why God gave him authority. That is why God gave him power. That is why Mungu akumwacha to he gave him power, he gave him dominion so that he can rule against the evil power. God does not just give us authority. The reason why we are born again, the reason why we gave our lives to Jesus Christ is because that life, that foundation of being born again releases dominion to us. It releases power to us. Mm. So Genesis chapter 2 verse number 9. Genesis chapter 2 verse number 9. And out of the ground the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree 
tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Mm. Let me read from uh, NIV. In a same the Lord God made all kinds of trees. He made all kinds of trees. All kinds of trees. Uh huh. Grow out of the ground trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. Those trees were good for food. And they were also pleasing to the eyes. Then, in the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and in the middle there was a tree of knowledge of good and evil it was there so apple the word evil means adam was aware adam was aware that he was coexisting with evil it was not something that just happened no adam was aware that he was coexisting with evil and that is exactly where the church is today evil has not been taken away and the evil will never be taken away from us we coexist now the reason why god gave us dominion power authority is to handle this evil power to dominate to rule to command that means the moment you realize that uh, evil is ruling over your life then you realize you are losing that authority you are losing that power you are losing that flavor your authority evil is available you are coexisting with evil but i'm not going to leave you like that no i will give you something that will help you to handle and to command evil and that is the reason why god had to give adam and eve authority power because of coexistence there was evil to read your scripture because i will give points under that scripture quickly let's uh, turn to king james king james we will read uh, uh, those versions and out of the ground made the lord god to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight very good and good for food the trees were good for food and they were also pleasing to see. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. Then he says, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden. There was the tree of life in the midst of the garden. All the trees were looking good. They were good and they were also good for food. But there is a difference here of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil knowledge of good and evil that tree was there the question is i asked god several questions god why did you put the tree of knowledge and evil in the midst and you knew the strength of adam and eve now the reason why the tree of good and evil was there is because adam was aware adam and eve knew that the evil man the devil was coexisting with him but what did god do god had already given him power to deal with this, this evil power so under Genesis 2 9 write the following very powerful now this is going to help us understand how to exercise our dominion how to release our purposes and how our dreams visions and purposes will come to pass in our lives number a when Adam was placed when Adam was placed in the garden he was aware of the presence of the enemy's kingdom this is very powerful be fruitful multiply increase 
priest. I am aware the enemy is, uh, is around, but I have given you dominion. Number A, when Adam was placed in the garden, he was aware of the presence of the enemy's kingdom. He was aware that the enemy has a kingdom. And the purpose of the kingdom is to try to defeat the kingdom of God. To intimidate, to rule, or to take dominion away from Adam. When Adam was placed in the garden, he was aware of the presence of the enemy's kingdom. He was aware. Now you see, the judge cannot pretend that we are not aware of the presence of the enemy around us. We are aware the enemy is, is, uh, is with us. We are aware that he has tricks. He has weapons that want to release against the church. Every single believer, every single child of God is aware that we coexist with evil. Evil was not taken away from us. We coexist. But we have been given power and authority. We are coming there to deal with this evil. Listen, child of God. Listen. As evil is increasing, first service, a friend of mine was talking to me from Ukraine. Walikuwa metoka Canada with the food and uh, medicine wakaenda so that they go assist. Walipo fika pale, the, the people they were going to assist walipata what wa mefiekwa. And, and you know, the men of us are seated here and we are saying, oh, Ukraine, and right. may God help us. In Jesus' mighty name. Number two, number B, sorry. He knew that good could be coexisting with the evil on earth. He knew that good could be coexisting with the evil on earth. He was aware, he knew. It is not something that he did not know or it's not something that he was not aware of. He was aware of it. We are aware that the enemy is fighting us on daily basis in our homes. We are aware that he is fighting us in our general lives. He will fight us through our children. He will fight us using our friends. He will fight us using resources. He will fight us using even the closest people. Why? Because we are aware that evil is existing here on earth. Now, if somebody cheats you, that uh, evil will not coexist with us is a lie. That is why people differ. That is why we have differences. It, will, it could want to come in between. In between. Number C, at the same time, at the same time, God bestowed dominion. At the same time, God bestowed dominion on Adam. He bestowed dominion on Adam. He gave him instructions about what to do with evil. Stack you cause he. At the same time, when Adam was aware of coexistence with evil, coexistence with the enemy, at the same time, point number C, God bestowed dominion on Adam. He gave Adam dominion. Yes, it is true, the enemy coexists with you. The enemy is around. The enemy's kingdom is within. But God bestowed dominion on Adam. That means he gave him instructions about what to do with evil. God never left him hanging. God has not left the church hanging or believers hanging. That is why we are attacked on daily basis. But we are aware. We are aware. Number D quickly, because of time. Adam had the ability to resist and conquer Satan and his kingdom when confronted with temptation. Because I don't want anybody to miss this. For you to fight effectively, 
for you to win your battles for you to have confidence no matter what has happened you must be aware of these things so we are in point number d uh, kindly adam had the ability to resist adam had the ability to resist adam had the ability to resist not only resisting but conquer satan and his kingdom when confronted with temptation now you must realize that every time you wake up in the morning immediately you wake up you are confronted with evil you would face all kinds of temptations all kinds of temptations instead of the church fighting or confronting or conquering evil the church because of lack of understanding lack of understanding they have opened the, the church has opened the door for the enemy to come in and begin to fight the enemy listen the enemy is not going to succeed in any area of your life never in jesus mighty name if there is a time we're gonna see god and if there is a time we're gonna manifest is this time to the glory and honor of his name that means anybody who is trying to fight the kingdom the kingdom that god has placed me in will not succeed or he will not be given room to succeed in jesus mighty name he will not number e evil must submit to our rule evil must submit to our rule evil must submit to our rule ndarudia evil must submit to our rule now as we continue to see the reasons behind adam losing his dominion or losing his power is to help us not to lose any power number f adam's purpose please write this adam's purpose was to carry out god's will by governing protecting and spreading his kingdom on the planet dairudia it is cause god adam's purpose what was his purpose adam's purpose was to carry out god's will by governing i'm going to govern that is what i'm co i've commanded you govern now you know people take this one just like it like this but this is what i want to declare to us according to the dominion we've been given we are supposed to govern our lives govern our health govern our children govern our resources if god has given us a job we are not taking that job for granted we govern it that means this is our territory i spoke about territory anybody who's trying to eye my job i will not allow you i will govern it i will govern it i'm going to show you how to govern so adam's purpose was to carry out god's will by governing the church must begin to govern you govern the territory you govern the place where god has placed you uh -huh. the other thing he was supposed to protect i protect that which god has given to me just going to take it lightly that god has given me children and i just no i govern them where they are god i govern my children i cover them by the blood of jesus listen our children are living with evil if you are keen you ask our children what are you going what are you facing what are, you know a pastor friend told me how they were trying to initiate his son and uh, thank god because the pastor was governing his children and by god's grace the son refused 
Now you see, we release our children like that. Go to school, go to school. As we on our musha, but you don't govern them. You don't get, actually. You don't even take time to pray for your children. The reason why God has given us dominion is to govern. So we govern everything that God has given to us. We govern our health. We govern our resources. We govern our jobs. We govern our businesses. We govern our health. We govern whatever God has given to us. Stage number two. Stage number two. Because I need to finish. Adam began to tolerate evil. Adam began to tolerate evil. This is what is happening in the house of God, the church. Adam began to tolerate evil. And Kaidin, we're going to go through the scriptures slowly by slowly. Where is the church today? The church has lost the power. We just make prayers for the sake of making prayers. But the, the prayers don't have tangible results. They don't, have, they don't carry power. And you realize the more you do this, you are destroying your life. You are destroying your future. You are, you are losing authority. You are losing that favor, that crown of power upon your life. Let's turn to Genesis chapter 3. Now you see before Genesis chapter number 3, we of course we read in Genesis chapter 1 verse number 26, verse number 27 and verse number 28 God has now given Adam power dominion he has allowed him to rule himself but you see we are seeing the process how this man lost that dominion, we will not lose the dominion that God has given to us. Listen, Genesis, now in Genesis, this man is falling. He's losing his authority, actually handed over his authority to the enemy. We are in our houses, things just happen and we, we are seated there, oh, maybe this is how things should happen. No, you govern. You govern, you control. Don't lose that authority. If you lose authority, you have no future. So in Genesis chapter number 3, please, we move there. Genesis chapter number 3, we will read, um, uh, for the sake of time, can we read verse number 4 and verse number 5? You will not surely die. You will not surely die. The serpent said to the woman, you will not die. You know, it was a process. Hey, I have put you in the Garden of Eden. This is your territory. Guard it. Work it. Govern it. Protect it. How, God, am I going to do this? I have given you dominion. I have given you power to assist you. But in Genesis chapter number 3 now, you will not surely die. The serpent said to the woman, verse number 5. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened. And you will be like God, knowing good and, and evil. You see, there is no way Adam could have lost dominion if he resisted to tolerate evil. Now, question. Question, write it down. When did Adam go from coexisting with evil to tolerating it? When did Adam go from coexisting with evil to tolerating it? When did it happen? How did it happen? When did Adam go from coexisting with evil to tolerating it? I know the evil, the enemy is existing, is with me. The answer, answer. When he began to entertain temptation in a state of taking dominion. Start to cause a 
question when did adam go from coexisting with evil to tolerating it answer number a when he began to entertain temptation in a state of taking dominion and immediately casting out the serpent from Eden. He did not do that. He began to entertain. He began to tolerate. I have wonderful sisters in this house. Very beautiful. You know you are beautiful. True or false? If I begin to entertain things which are not godly, things which are not biblical. The moment you entertain them or to relate them, the enemy enters and begins to chew you. It will not happen in Jesus' mighty name. Number P. By dwelling on Satan's statements. By dwelling on Satan's statements. He gave the evil one the right to touch his life and encroach on his relationship with God. I don't want you to miss this. These are simple instructions that kill and take away dominion from us. B, by dwelling on certain statements. Certain statements. Murango yako ni mzuri Kesho tena Eh muravi yatu yako ni poa Kesho hiyo ingine Eh You see Bwana suwe sana By dwelling on certain statements He gave the evil one The right to touch his life The right to touch his life And then crouch on his relationship with God. I assure you, when you tolerate some things in your life, the enemy will find a way of coming in and destroying your life. Many times we don't realize. Many times we don't realize. Be very careful with the statements you make with your opposite, with the opposite sex. Be very careful. Jesus and the churches in the first century. Jesus and the churches in the first century. And Ikaivotu. Jesus and the churches in the first century. Jesus and the churches in the first century. ask a very simple question. How many people want to maintain their dominion? Are you sure? Hey, Amen. Hey, without this, I cannot survive. Number A. Under Jesus and the churches in the first century. How did Jesus behave? How did he demonstrate? Number A. Jesus sent messages of admon admonition and encouragement to believers in seven different churches in the first century. And these messages are recorded in the book of Revelation. They are recorded in the book of Revelation. How he admo admonished them. How he encouraged the believers. How he gave them instructions of how to behave. How to conduct themselves. And these messages are clearly recorded in the book of Revelation. Very powerful. Number P, in the messages to the church at Tytheria, he said that he had a few things against them. A few things against them. This is Jesus Christ himself. Number C, one of these things was that they tolerated a woman named Jezebel. They 
tolerated a woman named Jezebel. They tolerated that woman. She was not the right woman. She was an evil woman. Jesus said, you tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. But she is not a prophetess. By her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of foods sacrificed to idols. Jesus was very categorical. Don't tolerate this. Let's turn to Revelation chapter 2 verse number 20. Don't tolerate this. Don't entertain this. Separate yourself from these things. They will kill you. They will destroy your life. Oh man of God, you see, we must have fellowship. We must, uh, we are sisters and brothers. Eh? Mbinguni siyo karibu. Mbinguni siyo koyango. Mbinguni siyo kondele. Mbinguni mbali. Mbinguni? Mbali. Listen to the message of Jesus. Revelation chapter 2, verse number 20. Nasema, Nevertheless, I have this against you. I have encouraged you yeah, from above. This one answer, he encourages them. He comforts them. He admonishes them. But he reaches somewhere and asema, hey, I have a few things against you. Be very careful. These things will kill you. These things will destroy you. I, Jesus, the creator of all things, I understand these things better than you. He says, nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess. By her teaching, she misleads my servants into what? Come on, into what? Into sexual immorality. And the eating of food sacrificed to idols. She calls herself a prophetess, a prophetess, but she's misleading my servants into sexual immorality. And this hinders and removes that dominion from my servant. Now listen, similar to the church at Thyatira, Adam and Eve tolerated the serpent called Satan. He tolerated and allowed him to influence them spiritually. He allowed him to influence them spiritually. That means he influenced Adam and Eve into committing a sin that was that destroyed and took away their dominion. Some of us, brothers and sisters, tolerate certain sins and wrong elements in our lives, even though we know they displease God. We know that what we are doing is not right, what we are doing is wrong, but we continue tolerating them. Brothers and sisters, when our relationship with God deteriorates, or we find ourselves being spiritually attacked in an area of our lives, we must ask ourselves some hard questions. We must ask ourselves some hard questions. Uh -huh. Questions. Number A. How did the enemy gain a foothold in our home? How did he enter? Some questions. How did the enemy gain a foothold in our home, in our lives, or our finances, or our businesses? How did he gain entry? How did he enter? Question number B. Could it be that we stopped tightening our income and assist honoring God with our money? How did Satan infect our church, city, or nation? How did he penetrate? In what way have we given him the legal right to afflict us? In what way? In what way? What authorized what authorized his attack against us? What gave him authority? So brothers and sisters, I believe that if we seek God with integrity and humility, he will give us the answers. And those are the answers we need. If we, if we repent, 
the blood of Jesus will cleanse us. The blood of Jesus will do what? Will cleanse us. We are not here to condemn anybody. We are here to build our tomorrow. We will recover our Eden and take back the dominion right. The dominion that the enemy has stolen from us. Now, the only way we can do this is by repenting. Is by repenting. Number three. Stage number three. I said there are four stages. I will mention the two in the next uh, ten minutes quickly. And then... Uh, Stage number three, how Adam lost dominion, how Adam lost the power. Number three, Adam lost the fear or reverence of the Lord. Adam lost the fear or reverence of the Lord. He lost the fear. He lost the reverence of the Lord. And this is where the church is. This is where the church is. Right now, as we talk, this is where the church is. The church has lost the fear, the fear of the Lord. The church has lost the reverence of God. You see, if I don't fear, if I fear man, I will do anything I want. But if I fear God, if I reverence God, I will not do anything that will just please people. I will do things that will please him. Let's Let's just read Proverbs 8.13 and then we close. Proverbs 8.13 and then we close. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is, the, is to do what? Is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance. Evil, evil behavior and the perverse speech. We will read three fashions and then uh, we make a prayer. The fear, to fear the Lord is to hate evil. So, it is the foundation of the fear of God that will cause me to fear to fear evil. I hate pride and arrogance. Evil behavior and perverse speech. The King James. King James. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogance. And the evil way. And the fraud mouth do I hate. Uh -huh. Amplified. The reverent fear and worshipful power of the Lord includes the hatred of evil, pride, arrogance, the evil way, and the perverted and the twisted speech I hate. This is God speaking. Very powerful. If we want to regain our dominion, our authority, our power, the glory of God. Brothers and sisters, we must avoid the, the four stages uh, uh, because we under point number three under point, uh, anyway, we, we will stop there. Uh, amen. We, we will stop there. Uh, very powerful. Uh, now, next Sunday, we begin to now begin to handle foundational teaching about purpose and mentorship. Once we deal with this, we are able now to move uh, uh, to the next stage. The Lord bless you so much. Uh, I want us to stand on our feet and make a prayer and enter into the, the service. Amen. Thank